few weeks ago, somebody commented on my YouTube channel wanting to know more about my power setup. Um, and I know I covered a little bit of that in one of my earliest videos, but I figured for him, I'd uh, go ahead and do a little bit more of a robust review of what I'm doing for power. So let's get started actually in the train shed. <clears throat> I am running old school DC analog setup. And I am using this guy right here, which is a Blue Streak 10 amp, I believe, or 18 amp, um, three channel DC controller. So as you can see, each channel on this remote, well, sort of remote, uh, device, <laughs> it controls three different lines. So this one, this uh, channel, I have controlling all of my train shed in here and these two spurs going out to the main line. This one is my outer loop. This one is my inner loop. So if I wanna control anything in here, this is what I'll use to give it power. This is obviously for the outside loop and inside loop. Um, I really like this transformer. They don't make it anymore. It hasn't been made for years. I think my family bought it when I was younger, like in the early 90s. And uh, it's been working good ever since. I did have an issue where this connects directly into a port here. And something had happened to the solder points where they were just really bad. And I was losing uh, control ability with this. So I opened this up and I had to do some jerry rigging, but uh, long story short, I got it mostly resolved now. So it is working properly. Um, the specs are, you can find them online. Like I said, I think it's 10 amp overall, um, but it's not 10 amp per channel. It's 10 amp divided amongst the three channels. So if I had three different trains running full power, I'd only get three and a half amps about for, or three amps about for each train. That's not a problem for me because I only have two locomotive runs. I have the outer and inside loop and um, you know, <laughs> five amps per train is not something I'm probably gonna hit anytime soon. And even if I do, all that means is it'll reduce the speed. That would be like maximum output. So I'm okay. I've never ran into an issue with that. Um, so anyway, just to recap, one of the channels controls everything in here and these two spurs. And then the other two channels control the outside loop and the inside loop and all DC. So what I did last year, you can see all the wiring I have for all the switches. Right now I have these manual on off toggles. So what I do is I flip it and it's active for that spur or I flip it and it's not. So like right now, if I turn this dial, none of my other trains are running. And you'll notice it's because all of the switches are off except for this one, which is the white pass, which I'm running around right now. If I were to run up there and switch one of these, the train would get power and start backing out. Um, I also, all these switches are ready. They have electric motors. Everything goes here into this corner, including this, which is an extension for this wire, uh, this control unit for my transformer. So my transformer is always gonna be in here. But my goal is to have all the wires go down, they go underground, and they actually go right here, under there. You'll see it in one of my old videos where I dug that. And they all go right here to this fake warehouse building I have, where you can see the wires nest here. Now my goal, I'll show you a photo of it, is um, I made a little control board that has the uh, all the switches on it and everything else that I wanna mount here and plug them all in and give it power. And in theory, I can sit here and just flip all the switches to control what's going on in there and have the power connected to uh, the controller for the transformer connected to this port here. So in theory, I could control everything from here. And practice it ain't gonna be that easy because I am still getting lots of derailments when I'm trying to exit trains out of here, specifically around this curve. It's all part of my renovation plans. At some point I want to, well, you saw in my last video, lower this back there, raise this up here, and hopefully, I don't know. 
it, it's definitely not 100% reliable. So if I do control everything from here, I know what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have multiple derailments as the trains exit. And because I don't have Rail Pro, I'm using this wired controller. <laughs> I need to be somewhere where I could turn it off and stop the train from running itself over, which right now is more convenient to have it there. So long run, who knows? I would like to get this set up at some point. I thought it would be this summer. But we'll see so let's go back to the power so dc blue streak transformer where's the outlets going well you can see i got some black wires here exiting and what they do is they actually are going up here and they go from there they go up all the way over to there and that's the other side of the crawl space way back there so over here, I'm gonna open this, get in here as best I can. I'm a big guy, so crawling into a small space like this is not easy. But here's the two runs for the inner and outer, outer loop. Come down here and you'll see what I got. What do you want, dog? You just have to be in each shot, don't you? What I have is I use these little XT60 connectors. So you'll see that I have a splitter and what that does and this one doesn't have a splitter here but it does have a splitter on the other side so what i do is from here i have the inner let me zoom out the inner or outer outer loop inner loop connected and then it's daisy chained from here right over to there so you'll notice my layout is what they call a dog bone or a, a peanut shaped and so what that means is if I have a power connection here, the furthest point on my layout is actually right over there, which makes it pretty easy to get two points of conductivity for my layout simply by having one here, having a wire come underneath and then connecting to that track there. And the same thing for the inside loop track. It's connected there and another connection right about there where the box cars are. And so that means that I have pretty much the whole layouts covered. Honestly, honestly, I don't know how critical it is um, here while the train's gone. Let me show you. So on the outside loop, I'm using these connectors, which are like traditional style. On the inside, I just did what somebody suggested. These are little eyelets is all they are. I soldered two and you jam them under the track and bend them a bit and they actually work pretty good. They work great as bridging uh, wire as well. I think I did that over here somewhere. I don't see it at the moment, but where I had a bad conductivity, you just use a little piece of wire to bridge the two. That was helpful. So, um, yeah, one point, one point, inside, inside. And that's it. That's how I have this whole thing wired with power. Pretty easy, actually. Um, I know some guys say every 50 feet you should have a power connector. That seems really overkill to me. In fact, I'm pretty confident if I detached one of these right now, I doubt I'd even notice much of a difference. The benefit of having multiple connectors is if you do have a bad section of track, or like let's say that joint right there is bad, but I had a connector over here and a connector over here, you could have it bridged. You have, you have less likelihood of having dead spots in your rail. Let me put it that way. So the more points of connection you have, the better. I think what I have is providing more than enough juice for this whole layout. In theory, if I wanted to overkill it, I'd have another connector over here and another connector over there. But this was super easy because I have them all coming under the house down here and then connection, 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 connection. So it's all right there rather than having to have a spur that comes all the way out over here and connect. So really from a high level perspective that is how the power on my layout works in addition to the power for the locomotives and trains i do have power for other things too like my switches and my city and lighting um, the switches aren't powered yet but they could be so again part of my whole scheme is i have a power pack here and uh, this is actually already connected. You can see it right here. 
So I have this blue board, which I've talked about earlier, but that is a photo sensor and that white wire going to the outside, that's the sensor itself. So when it gets dusk, that little board registers it's dark and turns on a little uh, 12 amp voltage circuit. And that is this little black wire you see there go into this building and it lights it up. Now what I want to do and what I should do is I have half of these buildings, this one, this one, and that one are all wired. They have lighting in them and they have a cable. I just need to get a little um, extension and connect them all to this guy. Again, it's something that most guys can take care of in an afternoon. When you have daughters and kids and family and everything else, you know, things tend to take a lot longer. So the power for these buildings is going to come from this photo sensor and uh, wall outlet and the wall outlets obviously connected to the house back there um, over on this side i have well my landscape lights so all these landscape lights are actually plugged in right back here uh there's a crawl space to the house don't mind my daughter playing with the fountain <laughs> crawl space to the house is in here i have a the official lights that I got from like Home Depot have an actual photo pack. You can see the little photo sensor right there and a power supply in there. And those power all my landscape lights. So what I did was for this cabin and for the Pagoda, I actually have them plugged in to the landscape light pack in there. So similar to that, when the landscape lighting kicks on, those, this building and that building light up as well. Now my hope is, again, I have this little shed wired, the train station's wired, and that little cabin are wired. So in theory, when I get a chance, if I just connect everything back to here with you know, Y connectors with really light gauge wiring and stuff, they should all light up when the landscape lights turn on. But haven't been able to get to that yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, next month, maybe next month. My girls are supposed to go on a short trip and <laughs> if I have my way and the weather cooperates, I will be out here doing lots and lots of work on the railroad. So I'm hoping that gave you a little bit of an overview on how I'm doing my layout, how I'm powering it. So let me just do a quick summary and recap. So train shed, I have my DC power supply running three different channels power from the house is right here it goes to the train shed it goes up through here down into the train shed and then the train shed feeds the or the power supply here feeds the power back out down and then i have inner and outer loops connected on each side basically halving the distance that the circuit has the current has to travel around the track so i have two points of connection I have one DC transformer providing about 10 overall amps of power to three different lines, though two are the only active lines uh, for running trains. Um, right now I have switches all wired for wire, uh, electric motor setup, but they do not have power, so everything's manually activated as of right now. Eventually I'm going to put a control board in here to activate and control all the switches remotely. I want to take the remote control for my wireless uh, not my wireless but my control unit for my transformer and sometime i'd like to put it in here but first i need to make sure derailments are minimized so i'm not having to do that literally 80 percent of the time i back a train out all the village in this area will be powered off of a uh, photo cell here uh, 12 volts and regarding the power for lighting some people would be curious so the typical little led bulb you get the little hobby bulb that you see in like everything those are about three volts depending on the color. Let's just say three, three and a half volts. Most power supplies are 12, so you'll, you'll pop them if you just plug them in directly. What I do is I have um, resistors on mine that I plugged into this photo cell. So exiting the photo cell, it steps it down to three volts. So that way, most of my lighting in these, it won't pop. However, I recently found some strip LEDs that are just 12 volt natural. I think they're made for um, like under cabinet lights and stuff in kitchens. And I got like warm white and that looks pretty good. Warm white to amber. That, that looks like a pretty good light color for interiors. And um, yeah, so that is what I'm trying to use on most of these over here. And the reason why is these outdoor lights run off 12 volts. So, hey, if I don't have to put in um, a resistor, 
all the better. It just, I plug it in and it just runs off the power it should. So for most of these, I'll be using the 12 volt. Honestly, if I could do it all over again, I probably just would use the 12 volts on these. It's easy and it's not that much of a pain in the butt. Um, let me see if I can show you what that looks like actually. So there it is. So you get these 12 volt strips and usually you can cut them in certain increments. So this one, you can cut it about every three cells. And so you see the plug I have there, just plug it in and bam, I should be good to go. <clears throat> so yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer. Uh, it really is not that sophisticated <laughs> when you get down to it. It's pretty basic. Um, when it comes to running these things. I think the key thing is making sure your transformer is not exposed to the elements, which is why I keep mine in that insulated train shed under the house. Um, it's been there for about a year and a half now, and other than a little dust on it, doesn't seem to be having any problems, so that's good. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions.